Coming in. Who wanna talk to me? Uh who's wanna who wanna hang out with me for a minute? I wanna talk about something. Hot off the press, I'm gonna wait till everybody come on in. Cause apparently I uh struck a nerve today. What's up, y'all? What's up, Desiree? Apparently, <laughs> apparently I done I done struck a nerve. So I'm gonna wait till all when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in, when the saints... I'm waiting on y'all. Go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching We're going to talk about it. In the end, oh, Lord, I want to be... I'm going to say this one time, so y'all might as well get in here fast. It's not going to be a long dissertation. You're not going to be on here trying to, and we're not explaining anything. I just want to share with a lot of people that just don't know. And I think uh, people perish because of the lack of knowledge. It's really sad to walk through your life with misunderstanding when you can get understanding. And the Bible tells us in all that you get, Get understanding. Therefore, you can uh, have an intelligent conversation. You can have the right perspective about things, right? I'd rather walk with knowledge and wisdom with the right perspective because I took the time to get understanding. But I know, notice a lot of religious people rather be in their feelings and, and instead of walking in truth, <laughs> And in order to really represent God, uh, you have to walk in truth or wisdom and knowledge, and it takes time to get that, right? And sometimes it's easy as just communicating with somebody and getting, uh, talking to somebody that actually know, right? You're like, if you need information, you can read it in the book, or you can actually go to somebody who, if, if that's their profession, like that's what they do for a living, Sit down with them and they'll explain it to you so you won't walk around ignorant with the wrong perspective. Now, I need everybody to share this because I'm going, I'm going deep in, 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 in about uh, five minutes. I'm trying to do it within 10 minutes because I don't have all day to teach y'all something that I thought everybody knew. I assume that people knew. <laughs> and, and that's what I get for assuming, right? I assume that most church people knew, but y'all don't know. Well, I guess I was breaking, it was breaking news today. Like y'all didn't know that gospel artists sample secular music. Y'all didn't know that? <laughs> what, where you been? You know that, but you, you've been, I guess you'd rather walk around with your eyes wide shut. It doesn't mean that that person is, is ungodly. It doesn't mean that they compromise and they got no power and all that extra stuff that y'all go through, all those changes. Sometimes it's just that, hey, I like that rhythm. I like that beat or that song. Uh, uh, it had, I, love, I love the way it is and I want to put my, my twist on it. I want to make it a gospel song. I want to make it powerful. I want to make it something. I hear something that God has given me to make this beat uh, uh, connect. It, it's, it's really that simple. And religious people say, you don't need the world. To, you don't know who said I needed the world to do that. I just want to do that on this particular song. When you're making a record, you, you have about 10 to 15 songs to produce, right? And, and you, you may write all, you may write 10 original songs that you ain't sample nothing. Listen to me. Listen. You may write 10 original songs that you got from your soul, from the heavens. 
And then you may take two songs and say, oh, I love that beat, that old school. The times dun, dun, dun. You're like, man, that, that's such a good feeling. You may want to flip it. You got dun, dun. I'll be praising you. It's, 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 it's really that simple. But religious people, that you compromising, you got to, you don't even know. Like, it doesn't mean I'm compromising. It means that I love that sound. I want to pr produce something like that on that particular song, but I want to make it, I want to give it to, to the Lord. This is what you need to understand that your pastor have probably not sat down with you and taught you. Let Pastor Dietrich teach you. Here it is. There is no sin in sampling music. There is no sin. Repeat after me. Re put it in the comments. There is no sin in sampling music. You, repeat after me. Uh-uh. Uh, don't. I, I'll see y'all here. I'm going to let you talk in a minute. There is no sin in sampling music. Write it down. Make it clear. There is no sin in sampling music because every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. Right? Right? Every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. It's men and people that pervert the music. Right? You put your attitude, your spirit, your message in the music, and it makes it what it is. But the music itself is not sinful. The music itself is not evil. Let me teach you something else that your pastor probably won't tell you. That there is nothing new under the sun. Repeat after me, because I'll never want to have this conversation with you again. There is absolutely nothing new under the sun. You may think you're coming up with something original. That sound has been somewhere, somewhere before, somewhere. Doesn't mean it is evil. Doesn't mean you're ungodly. Doesn't mean you're compromising. It's just there's nothing new under the sun. What has been will be again. Do you got it? Now, let me explain to you. I made a comment that was, it's, no, it's not up for debate. If you want to debate, it's because you just want to be in your feelings and you just don't want to agree. But you, if you want to walk around ignorant like that, be my guest. But you can't say that I did not inform you. Some of the top gospel songs in the world has been influenced if it was not directly sampled from a certain beat from some other artist somewhere. It was inspired by something somewhere. Like, let me just speak for me. Like, I'm a huge, I'm from Detroit, so I'm a huge Winans fan, right? But if you listen to an old Winans record and you listen to an old, you listen to an Earth, Wind and Fire record, you will see that their music, all of their music, all them songs, the question is, all of them, all, you name it. <laughs> they were influenced by the sound of Earth, Wind and Fire and they will tell you that. They will tell you that. Let's keep going. I mean, if the list goes on and on, even Twinkie Clark, who's incredible, who's original, but she had an idea to flip uh, one of Stevie Wonder songs. And she said, you made my day. You came my way. Boom, boom. Oh, man, I'm feeling good about it already. And when I heard it, like, oh, my God. First of all, that's genius. It's not easy to do. For those of you who don't want to sit and just run your mouth, it's not easy to do. And make it connect. To take something that's already been, flip it, and give it over to the Lord, and it connects with the world. I mean, I can go commission to. I mean, you name it. You name it. I mean, Half of, 
Half of these artist catalogs have been from sampled songs from that you've danced to, you've worshipped to, you've praised God to. And let me, and it's not sinful because you've been, you mean to tell me you've been compromising for a long time? Get out of that. I'm trying to snatch you out of the spirit of religion. I'm trying to pull you out of there. You got to come out of there. Get out of there because it can't help you. It cannot help you. Let me help you understand it like this. I'm going to try to break it down as as um, you know, I'm, I got to break it down. Here it is. Look at sampling music like this. The house that you're living in, you purchased this house, right? Before you purchased this house, it was owned by somebody somewhere, and no telling what kind of ungodly stuff that was going on in every room in this house before I got here. Do you understand? I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. If you leave here still talking that crazy stuff, then that's, that's on you. That is on you. That is on you. You purchased the house you got. Before you got to the house you have, they had sex in one room, orgies in that room, killed somebody in that room, did somebody over there, did drugs over there. But now that, that those things are moved out of the house, you have purchased the home, it's yours. You plead the blood of Jesus in every room. You put the blood over the doorpost. You put oil, slanging oil all over the house. And you live in truth and you live righteously in that house. That house has now been purchased. It is now yours. It now belongs to God. If you understand anything that I just told you, say amen. Put it in the comments. Stop talking. Stop saying everything else on the comments. I need to know that you just heard everything that I said. Before you get in your feelings, get out of that. I only operate on truth. I only like to teach on, I don't get off in the emotions. I stay within the word and I stay with common sense. That's the way you got to live. That's how you make sure you don't go off and you don't err in the faith and go off on the deep end. If you heard anything that I just said, say, Pastor Dietrich, I understand. I'm looking, Valerie, thank you. I'm glad you, I'm glad you got it, Valerie. Out of all the people, I'm so happy. Kimberly, I'm so happy that people that are called to my voice, that, understand, that know my heart, that you even come to prayer with me, you understand. It's just like you. Before God came into your life, into your body, you did all manner of evil. No telling where you were. <laughs> you did. You was in. No telling what you did. No telling where you, what, where you were. But when the Holy Spirit comes in, it renovates. It takes over, and now your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now, if you want to keep talking about what you did on yesterday and your past, and never move into the future, that's on you. Thank you, Lisa. I'm so glad, Bria. Y'all are people of understanding. You won't understand. So you're talking to somebody that's been in the music business for 30 years, over 30 years, over 30 years. I've been making original music that you've danced to and worshiped to. He's able was original. I didn't sample nothing. Well done. Had a little influence of Purple Rain in there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 anybody want to hear him say? Anybody want to hear him say? Ah, well done. You can come on in. Boom. Just want to make it to heaven. Boom, 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 boom. I just want to make it. You know, it's, it doesn't mean that it's not of God. It means that I took it. And I gave it, I gave it over to the Lord. It doesn't mean I'm compromising. You are not, you're a clown and you're goofy and all the things, evil things that people say when they don't know how to have an intelligent conversation. When people don't know how to have intelligent conversations, they resort to disrespecting you. Well, we got to learn how to disagree without disrespect. That's the next level for the church. I'm praying for you. That we don't always have to agree on the same thing. But let's not disrespect. You done kicked me out of the church. You done called me. I'm not of the Lord, God. You done, called, you done said everything that you could possibly say. And it's disrespectful to, for all the thousands of people that have come to know Jesus through my ministry. There are thousands that would testify. By, probably in the millions now. I've been doing it for 30 years. 
of people that said, man, my life was turned around listening to Dietrich Hadden music. You don't get a chance to go in your on your platform and disrespect me. Because what you do is you disrespect God. Because it's the Lord that brought me here to do what I do. You quiet now. You, you mighty quiet. Sometimes you have to just stop and get understanding. And see, that's why the church is in the state that it's in right now. Nobody want to listen. Everybody's in their feelings. Everybody's in their emotions. Everybody want to be right. You, 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 what happens when you're not right? Because you did not get understanding. You got people speaking on behalf of God with no knowledge of the music business. Sampling is not evil. I want my church to know. I want anybody that want to hear the truth from a producer and songwriter. Right. You know, I got like 30 records that I produce. I'm, I'm not just somebody you disrespect or just say he don't know what he's talking about. or He's a compromiser. No, I'm not a compromiser. I'm not. I just have knowledge that you don't have. And you could learn something in the music business if you listen. I know it's hard receiving it from me sometimes because I'm not your average. I don't have a collar, roll bones, going through religious changes like y'all go, go through. I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not interested. I'm not, I don't do that no more. There was a time. I don't do that. <laughs> if you want to know truth, uh, uh, and you want to know information about the music business, I'll be glad to talk to you. But please don't get up and, and don't have no more conversations on your comments and your posts about uh, sampling is not of God and you're compromising and you're sinning and all this stuff. Just stop. Just don't. It's, there is no sin in, in, in the music. There's no sin in taking a sound that influence you or that you like or rhythm or beat that you like and make it what and giving it to God. It, it's, 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 it's not, it's, there's no sin in it. And God has breathed on many of those songs and made them number one. Many of my songs that may have a sample have gone to number one. Doesn't mean I'm compromising for money. I don't even want to see that again. That gets under my skin. I had one brother just wanted to be so mad at me. Say he, he been, you know, since he can't make it in the secular world, he didn't. Brother, first of all, I turned down four major Record deals documented. You can go talk to the people. They're still alive today Four. so that I can do what God has called me to do. I've been singing gospel music, not because I'm trying to get rich, because if I wanted to get rich, I would have been left gospel music and sang rock and roll or whatever, because I can do it. So don't fix your mouth. Don't let the devil get in your mind to fix your mouth and speak on what you don't know. Don't speak on me. If you want to talk to me, I'll tell you. I do this because this is a calling on my life. You may not like it, but you got to take that up with God. I'll never forget the day I signed the deal with Arista Records. See, you don't know none of this. I signed the deal, Arista Records. Tim and Bob, some of two of the top producers, and Tony Rich. You probably know Tony Rich. Nobody knows it but me. Dun, dun, dun. Before you knew that song, he's one of my good friends, was producing my secular album. Tim and Bob, who wrote the thong song, and wrote songs for many people, were producing my secular album. So don't tell me Dietrich Haddon, he couldn't make it in the secular world, so he could now he's singing the gospel. You disrespecting everything that the work that I put in, because you want to be in your feelings. You can't do that. You're going to get in trouble with God now. I'm trying to help you out. I signed the deal, went home, and had a Holy Ghost supernatural experience in my room at 17 years old. 17. And the Lord told me, you cannot go back to that studio again. Talk to me like I'm talking to you. You will not do your R&B record. It's not going to happen. The Lord, I said, I signed the deal. It's too late. God said, tell him you ain't never going back. I'm getting you out of the deal. That's after I signed it. Done. I was getting ready to be the next baby face. <laughs> That's what they were trying to do. Called them on the phone. They said, I said, I can't do 
this R&B record. I can't do it. They said, you you done got 20 songs in the studio here. So we finally got you a deal with Arista, and you're not coming. I said, I can't come. I called Tim and Bob. They will tell you right now. Get, you can get Tim on. I wish Tim was on here right now. He'll tell you. This is a true story. Nothing added. True story. After I said I'm not going back to that studio, I set on the path to fight with y'all. To have my own originality, my own style, to fight with church people that disrespect you who you are. I'm not going to let you do it. Now, you don't have to like me, but don't disrespect me. I work too hard. Too many souls saved. But you just be able to bump in your gums because you don't like something that I, how I think. Stop. I'm in the kingdom. Don't, when you cut, when you shoot your foot, you can't stand up straight. That's the problem with the church. You're busy destroying each other. And that's why we're out here looking crazy. Tim and Bob will tell you the same story. Tony Rich will tell you the same exact story. They're alive and well to confirm everything I just told you. So don't, I don't ever want to hear you tell a gospel artist that you're trying to be a superstar, you're trying to be rich. If they wanted to be rich and be a superstar, they could sing pop music or anything else with these awesome voices that they have. Don't do them like that. Most of us, we got a call on our lives. And God said, you got to do it this way, but you can do it the way you want to do it. You can sing it the way you want to do it, sing it, but you cannot go on that side. Because if you go on that side, you will be a mess, a wretched mess. I believe if I had gone and sang just straight R&B music, I wouldn't be alive today because that's how extreme I am. I'd be the main one acting the fool. You hear me? I'd be the main one. Y'all see how I am? I'm already on, on the edge. <laughs> Imagine me going all the way for the devil. God said, nah, uh let me pull your coattail, brother. You come over here and <laughs> you sing for, for me, but you have the freedom to do it your way. No, no, Monica. I'm, I'm, I'm ignoring them. I'm giving people opportunity to share. I, I, I'm sharing because a lot of people just don't know. So I don't I don't care about what people say about me. I got tough skin. But this is my opportunity to tell you, don't do that. You speaking on something you call an unclean what God is called clean. Somebody told me you didn't turn down, you turned, you couldn't make it in the RB just because you want to be mean. Just stop, don't do that. I got countless stories that I could tell you. And for 10 years, 10 years of my life, while I had to watch my brothers get Grammys, Tim and Bob, Tony Rich, you got a Grammy. The, we were all in Detroit together. But because I had to obey God, I had to watch other people get Grammys. Every year they'd tell me, Dietrich, I got you a record deal. Tim, Tim Kelly would tell you right now, every year he said, I'm, on, I'm in the car, I just played him on your demo, your R&B record. We got you a deal to come out here right now. We got your ticket, come out here now. We out here with L.A. Reid, we got you now. I said, no, y'all going to hell. <laughs> that was the mindset that I had when I was younger. That God told me not to do that, and I ain't doing it. Y'all going to go to hell doing, you know. And they'd be like, man, we ain't going to hell, but you you missing out on your blessing. <laughs> I haven't missed out on nothing. I don't have any regrets because the lives has been touched, the thousands and um, up towards millions of souls has been touched through the music. Each album, each each song that God has given me, uh, he's able, has been sung around the world. Well done has been sung around the world. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. If you really want to stop and know about me and check my catalog, just look up Dietrich Hatton. Go look up all the records I've done since the 90s. So, so, so I'm sharing with this with you so, so you, maybe you can share it with somebody else so they can ch change their perspective. Because a lot of this thinking is because people just don't know. I, 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 I can't even get upset with a lot of church folk. And I see their comments and I'll just be shaking my head. Now, now I don't even say nothing no more. I just be shaking my head like... Somebody got to do a class with everybody and just like get the church together and just gather everybody together and have a real teaching on where we are, music, the music business, what it takes to what God is calling us for us to do. Somebody just really need to sit everybody down and we got to learn how to be the church and be be together and stop fighting each other. Now, today I said something that I mean, I meant it with all my heart.
Who want to talk to me on here? I think I'm going to let somebody go live and ask me a question so I can share with you. And I'm not going to go in here and fuss with nobody. I'm a, if you ask me a question, I'll share with you to the best of my ability. But I said something that was real that cannot be debated. I said that gospel artists have been sampling secular music, secular artist music for decades and turning them into gospel songs. I just gave you a whole uh, understanding of that, right? So we're walking in understanding. And so what I said was truth and it cannot be debated. Some of your favorite Kirk Franklin songs. Is that your favorite? So it's samples. Samples from Earth, Wind, and Fire. Dun, dun, dun. Jesus, you are, dun, you are in a storm. Dun, 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 dun. Storm. It's all samples. They're the, they're the compromisers. No, he's not a compromiser. He took the music and, and put God in it, and it all belongs to God. He took it back. Just, just stop that. He took it back, refurbished it for God. Now, my statement was gospel artists have been t uh, sampling secular music for years, for decades. Now, when secular artists want to sample our songs, you can't get self-righteous and say, you can't, you can't sample God's song. You can't do that. Got to give it to them. Let them do what they want to do with it and let them take it up with God. I ain't going to get no amens now. So I ain't going to get no amens because you still want to be religious. But that's hypocrisy. Y'all, you, you still over there. It's hypocrisy for you to take their song whenever you feel it or get their melody or idea or inspired by, by other songs. And now they get, they get inspired by your songs, your song. And now you tell them you can't do take the Lord's song. No, you you shut your mouth. You're a hypocrite. You let them sample a song. You let Beyonce sample her song and do what she write her song to her audience. And you mind your own business. And if God has a problem with it, he'll deal with it. Not you. You're not God. Stop playing God. Stop it. Stop it. It's God. Let him handle Beyonce if he has a problem with it. The amazing thing is we don't know how to just let people do them and let God deal with them. We always got to be all up in like we some demigods running around here controlling the narrative and being religious and policing everybody. Do you hear what I'm saying? Sinners are going to be sinners. Saints are going to be saints. Ain'ts are going to be ain'ts. Let God deal with everybody. Because the same ones that's up there preaching and squalling and running your mouth about everybody else. The Bible said they're going to be preachers on judgment day who said, Lord, I preached. Lord, I prophesied in your name. In your name, I casted out devils. He's going to say, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. Depart from me. That's Bible. I think everybody needs to stop and work out your own salvation. It makes sure five years from now, you're still serving the Lord because it's going to get tough from here on out. You got to make sure 10 years from now, you're still holding on to your faith. You don't have time to be sitting back judging Beyonce or nobody else. And here's the amazing thing. God is so bad. When I look at this church girl situation, the fact that she named the church girls let me know that the church is on her mind. That means that God is getting closer and closer to her heart. And she probably most likely already know the Lord. And God is reaching her at his pace and his timing. And he's going to do it. I believe that heaven is going to be more populated than hell. I believe more people are going to make it into heaven than hell. That's the way I believe. Because God didn't bring us here to send us all to hell like you want to do. You want to send everybody to hell when you ain't got no power to do it. And it, it blows my mind. <laughs> it blows my mind that somebody is crazy enough to send somebody to hell when you have no authority, no power to put nobody into heaven or hell. So you're wasting time. So a lot of these people, they ain't got no power. They don't, they don't do, they have no prayer life and they ain't got nothing to preach. So they preach on the hot topic. How about you preach the word? 
So the people can say, what must I do to be saved instead of uh, disrespecting someone? When I look at things like that, I say, first of all, that's the epitome of church hurt. That's what people have been crying about for years, how you take that microphone and you just sling the sword around and cut everybody in sight. And you don't have no care about their families because people, you, while you're running your mouth, Beyonce got a mother, a brother. She got sisters. She got a father. People that love God to go to church and here and, and here you are speaking her name and throwing her uh, to, to the wolves and putting her in hell. And how would that make you feel? How would that make you feel if you seen some preacher somewhere in all of his glory running your child down because he don't understand nothing? I'm asking you, how would it make you feel? I know how to make me feel if some preacher somewhere running my daughter down when I know she know the Lord and I know God is going to deal with her in his timing. But you are now turning and rallying people against somebody. The, the bottom line is people see those posts just like you. Celebrities see everything you post. Trust me. And right now, if they on the outside looking in, if they see how we've been doing, I would never want to come to church. You hear me? <laughs> At least not yours. And here's the thing. Somebody say she's wrong. She could be wrong. She could be wrong, but that's not my argument. That's I'm saying that's between her and God. Do you get it? She wrong. Okay. Uh, I, I, not, that ain't mine. I'm not. Okay, that's how you feel. But, but what you going to do about it? I'm going to call it out. No, what you going to do is step back and let God deal with her because God will handle her with care. Your job as a believer is to love people and pray for Beyonce and whoever else. I mean, why is it so hard for church people to understand that you need to mind your business and let God handle his business? It's, why is it so hard? Let me ask you, preach, teacher. Let me see who. I'm asking y'all, why is it so hard for church people to mind their own business? Somebody says she's wrong. I, I don't, I'm not getting into that. You shouldn't even waste your energy on that because that's a matter of opinion. That's a matter of opinion. Because, you know, she's talking about church girls, you know, dropping like a thought. They've been doing it for years. Church girls have been doing a whole lot of stuff. Trust me. Been doing stuff behind closed doors and in, in front. <laughs> church girls ain't holy, ain't perfect. So I don't know, you know, now that somebody telling you about it and showing you yourself. You getting all indignant. How about you just straighten up and don't do that? Stop dropping it. Just, just do right. But you want to be take the religious route. Well, DJ, why are you not being so angry about what she did as heresy? Well, because I'm taking the Jesus approach. You can take the Pharisee approach. It's two approaches you can take. It. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna get up out of here. There's two mindsets you can have when you see something that you don't like that you think is sacrilege and ungodly and unholy and it's two approaches right i'm gonna take it from this text here and you should know this story but i want to bring out some things that you probably don't pay attention to they brought the woman to jesus and threw her down she was caught in the act she was wrong She was probably doing all manner of evil. She probably was doing it every which way. <laughs> and everybody could see it. it imagine it, it back in the biblical times, somebody had a phone and it went live and they caught her in the act. And they said, we're going to take her to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the leader of the church. I ain't talking about these guys that's doing what they're doing. I'm talking about the leader of the real church, the kingdom of God, the one who introduced the kingdom to us. So we're going to take her, the sinner, and throw her down before Jesus and see what Jesus will do. If you notice in the text, Jesus gave no energy to the sin. Even when she was wrong, there's no doubt that she was wrong. I'm talking for the person who on here that said she wrong, she wrong. You stuck on that. 
You stuck. Okay, and I can't help you. That's 40 years of being embedded in that dogmatic doctrine. I know where you come from. I'm, I'm from that world too. So, <laughs> so I have, I understand you, but I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to pull you out. I'm trying to pull you out. <laughs> she wrong. Okay, she wrong. Just like the woman that was caught in the act. Everybody knew she was wrong. Even Jesus knew she was wrong. Okay, she wrong. Jesus Christ of Nazareth knew she was wrong. But it gave no energy to the problem, to the sin. He said, I'm coming to the hand. I got a plan for the sin. I'm come, coming to hang on the cross and die for the sins of the world. I'm not giving no energy to that right now. What I want to deal with, what I'm going to give all my energy to, is to people, to the ones that dropped her off in front of me. I'm going to give you my energy. Look at you. You squirming. You squirming around. Look at you. Uh -huh. Acting like you don't hear what I'm saying. I'm going to say it again. Jesus knew she was wrong, but he gave no energy to it. He focused on the, where the energy needed to be. He said, you... That's without sin. Let me see who's going to be the first to cast a stone to hit her. Because if you do that, because you know I know your stuff. I know, I know all, the, I know that your thoughts, the iniquities of your mind, you can't pull over that over me. You can go through your religious stuff with other folks, but you can't do it with me. I'm the, listen, I'm God manifesting the flesh. Jesus was sitting there like, who's going to be the first? They all looking around trying to see who gonna swing first when they know they didn't just got out of bed with the with the with the with the neighbors. They just no good. <laughs> they done just got done doing whatever they gonna do. They they we wouldn't dare. We need to learn how to take the Jesus approach to every single situation. Because the people that you're running down and posting about, they are a potential soul. I know I'm talking good. I know. I know I'm teaching right. Heaven knows I'm teaching right. I don't need no amens from folks here. Heaven knows that I'm teaching you the right way. You got to love people. If love ain't nowhere in it, it ain't God. I don't care how much you can sling scriptures, how, how you attack other people, how, how much you tell people he ain't in the kingdom, she ain't in the kingdom. If you ain't got love, it's flush it down the toilet. Heaven ain't listening to you, and I'm not either. Everything we, we are identified, brothers and sisters, by our love, not by our attack against each other, not by our judgment. It's by our love. When are we going to get it? When? Why is it so hard? Jesus gave no energy to her sin. He's, he had a plan for that. He had a plan to deal with that. He came to die for the sins of the world. Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's scripture. Look it up in John. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whoever it is, Beyonce, me, you, whosoever, believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus have a plan for sin. You don't have to play God. I'm going to say that again because I know you didn't like that. But you need to hear it. You don't have to play God. I'm going to say it again. You don't have to play God. God can handle it himself. Period. My post was simply to tell you stop being a hypocrite. Stop that. Y'all been sampling God, uh, secular songs for years. Now when uh, R&B and hip-hop artists want to sample your gospel song, you get indignant. You're, you're a hypocrite. Stop being that way because that's not godly either. You let them do what they're going to do and let God deal with it. God got a plan. If God don't like something, he got a way of getting, letting them know he don't like it. You don't need to be all up in the mix. You don't need to get up and rally the troops against nobody. You don't need to get somewhere and be trying to call everything out. Just listen, because it's amazing to me. Let me tell you the kind of God we serve while you're over there talking. 
Why you over there running? I know y'all don't like this. They're getting up out of here, but I'm telling you, I'm going to tell anyway. You, I'm going to tell you anyway. God is the kind of God that will take the worst sinner and turn them around and use them for his glory while you run in your mouth. And you're talking about somebody when they're only in a season and that season is not going to last forever. That season is going to change and God is going to deliver them and God's going to use them for his glory. But you got your mouth fixed against them and you could be speaking on the next prophet that will speak the word of the Lord. You could be running your bumping your gums real loud about somebody that God has, has a plan to save and use for his glory. When you don't have to. All you have to do is mind your business and pray for folks when you don't understand something. And if they're wrong, God will get them. God got it. You don't have to blame God. You got, he's got it. Now, another portion that I, what blows my mind about God is when I think about the, the, the awesome, amazing, incredible Twinkie Clark. Because, see, I'm from Detroit and I grew up. That's all I listened to was the Clark sisters. And I've been in awe of Twinkie Clark's genius since I was introduced to their music. I would sit up all night and listen to the Clark sisters' music and learn every riff, every run. I learned how to do harmonies listening to the Clark sisters. I learned how to sing listening to all those, uh, uh, the, the sisters. And I was always blown away that Twinkie Clark could get on the organ and write them songs. And she was incredible. I used to go to Bailey Cathedral and sneak in the back at a musical packed house just so I could get a glimpse of Twinkie. That's how much of a fan I am. I mean, I just wanted to get a glimpse of Dorinda. She was so fine. <laughs> She's still fine, but, but, but I'm telling you, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, Lord, I can't even look her in the eye, Jesus. She's so fine. <laughs> I used to go to those Bailey Cathedral just to see Twinkie get on the organ and to see Karen, uh, First Lady, forgive me, First Lady Sheard, uh, uh, and, 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 and Dorinda Clark Cole walk through the door with them fur coats on, you hear me? And it'd be like the glory of the Lord just stepped in the room when you see Twinkie. You hear me? It was like, oh, my God. Listen, uh, uh, Dorinda was the first Beyonce. She, she was, Dorinda was so super fine. Everybody wanted Dorinda. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I was in awe of their gift. And to find out that a gospel label swindled a young, innocent Twinkie Clark out of her publishing makes me make me fight mad. You hear me? I'll, if I could swing on whoever it was, I would knock a tooth out. Well, if I could, I'm, that's how angry <laughs> that make me like. You mean to tell me all those hit songs that shaped my musical uh, uh, world? You stole the songs from the girl, the lady who wrote it. You don't have no fear of God and she trusted you. You offered her a car. Oh, Lord, you know she didn't know any better. When I heard that and we got the details of that, it's just, you know, I was next to tears. Like, how? Because I'm a songwriter. Like, that's that's my life. Like, if I, it's my song writing is, is what makes me wealth wealthy. You know, I've been writing my songs for 30 years. I, every song you heard of mine, I wrote it. So it keeps me afloat. You know what I'm saying? It, makes, it gives me a good life. You done stole it from her? So you mean to tell me she's struggling when she wrote all, you brought the sunshine? And all these other hits. So I said, man, when I seen that Beyonce sampled her song, I said, look at God. Why you caught up on what Beyonce, I'm not paying attention to what she's saying. I don't, don't agree with the half of that. But I, what I, I do like the fact that you had a mind to want to bless Twinkie. Beyonce, you had a heart. You could have used anybody's sample. In the world, you a Beyonce, but you thought enough to bless Twinkie. I don't care what y'all say. 
<laughs> Listen, I don't care what y'all say. Half y'all won't bless your own sister or your brother while you running your mouth. That's ungodly. You ain't even you ain't tried to bless nobody. You so selfish. If they ain't somewhere uh, kissing your behind, you ain't doing nothing for them. You hear Beyonce just doing it out of kind of out of the kindness of her heart. So I want to bless Twinkie. Let's take that Twinkie sample. Yes, we call it church girls just to make sure that we honor her. Okay, great. Now, Twinkie get paid all the back pay. <laughs> come on, Jesus. Ooh, come on. You know how to take the wealth and transfer it to your people. You know how to take a Joseph and make him the head, second man in command of all of Egypt to bless your people. God, you are super bad. I'm so glad God is not religious like you are, like people are. We all religious, but God is not religious. He, he said, listen, listen, I'm a use, but while they running talking about Beyonce, I'm a use. I got to bless Twinkie because Twinkie has been a blessing to millions and they robbed her. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to touch Beyonce one day. I'm going to get a producer to, to, to produce, to take a sample from Twinkie. And she's going to get everything back. Everything the enemy stole from her. I feel like running around my house. You hear me? I will run around my house thinking about that thing. <laughs> I celebrate it. I don't care what you got to say. I celebrate it. Thank God for somebody that have a heart. It's amazing. It's, it's amazing how God has to go outside of the church to bless somebody in the church. Because we don't. Y'all, listen, we busy attacking each other. Y'all want to fight each other in which a house divided against his own won't stand. Y'all haven't learned the art of disagreeing without disrespect. We ain't going to always be on the same page. Don't mean we have to be disconnected from each other. So God said, I got to use somebody else because right, right now this is, it's in disarray in <laughs> the church. <laughs> Y'all busy fight. We can't, we should, everything that kingdom people should be doing should be number one. There's, there, anything that we're doing should be number one because the church, especially in America, I mean, we got church, the church is, is strong if we learn how to come together. I got a movie out right now, a literal movie. It's incredible. Probably the best movie, one of the best movies of the year. It's called The Fallen. I wonder how many of y'all done went and seen it. I mean, I wonder how many of y'all downloaded it from All Black or wherever you've seen it and seen Dietrich Haddon's have fallen. I ain't doing it because he 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 said this back in the day, and I shut your mouth. <laughs> Just shut your mouth. You a hater. You a low key undercover hater. That's what you are. That's what you are. And God's gonna keep on blessing me like He always does. And the more you hate on me, you give God more of a reason to bless me. That's how it goes. That's how it works. Because God knows my heart and he knows what, he, what he's called me to do. And you may not want to subscribe, deliberately not download it and watch it. But trust me, it's the, one of the number one films on All Black. And we about to shoot our next one. It's too late. We, 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 we successful already. We, we on our way. But we got to learn how to celebrate each other. Because when God opens a door for your brother, it opens a door for you. And why are you trying to make me your enemy when I'm not your enemy? I'm not. Trust me. I ain't in no fight with nobody. It's, I seen this guy just running me down on, on, uh, on YouTube. I mean, just, he said all manner of evil. <laughs> and I just sit there and laugh and say, first of all, like, I don't even know you like that. And I'm not your enemy. And it's the same one who said Trump would be president. He, he prophesied. And your, that means your words have no merit whatsoever. <laughs> this is the same brother who said Trump, God said Trump is going to be the president. I've seen it in prayer. And then who, who's the president? That means you are a false prophet. You are false so anything you say has no merit. You just bumping your gums and people is really watching whatever you're saying because they, they see how crazy you are. <laughs> see how, how stupid you are. <laughs> they want to see you proper lie again. They want to see you proper lie. It's, it's crazy. 
and doing all that. Now, all I did was get up and, and, and post what, what I felt about the situation. I ain't trying to ruffle no feathers. I don't need y'all attacking my faith in God and my, I'm out of the kingdom and I'm a compromise and I'm ungodly. Just saying everything you can think of come to your brain. <laughs> and all I did was say, hey, gospel artists has been sampling beef. A secular artist for years. It's the truth. Because I do. I mean, we've been doing it. You couldn't handle the truth. So when you can't handle the truth, you want to attack me. And I'm not your enemy. I am your brother in Christ. If, if you met me, I'll, probably, I'll give you the shirt. Anybody tell you that know me, I'll give you the shirt off my back. But you make, you're trying to make me your enemy. It's a foolish thing. To make an enemy out of a friend. Of somebody who, can lo who loves you. You want to, you just trying to force me to be your enemy and I'm not interested. <laughs> I got, I got the devil to deal with. I'm a prayer warrior. The devil mad at me. I'm not trying to be at odds with you. Like Ply said, you mad. You big mad. Why are you so mad at me? Because <laughs> I, I got an opinion. I'm not going on your page and running you down because you got an opinion. I'm not creating a whole YouTube page against you because you got an opinion. You, you can have your opinion. You may think that, that you know, Beyonce is the fool of the devil. That's okay. I'm not. Oh, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, too, too, I'm not in the fight with you. I'm just giving you facts. I'm telling you, gospel artists been 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 uh, sampling music for years. You can't handle that truth. Whether you can handle it or not, it's the truth. It ain't going to change nothing. So, so, so we're not, you know, I'm not anybody's enemy. Just somebody put the word out there to everybody. Every gospel singer, every R&B singer, every preacher. Tell them Dietrich Haddon is not your enemy. He's actually could be one of your best friends. He's going to keep it real with you. <laughs> keep it. If, the only people that can't handle my friendship is people that don't want to hear the truth. Because I vow to all my friends, I will tell you the truth. And I expect the same thing from you. Tell me the truth. And if we can't come on the same page, at least we can disagree without disrespect. See, I'm the kind of friend, I can fuss with you. And when you get through saying what you're saying, I get out what I'm trying to say. And we Let's go eat. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Where we going? We going over here? We going to what? Cheesecake Factory? What we doing? We going over to do what we we going to a Ruth Chris. Let's go sit down and eat. We don't agree on this subject, but there are millions of subjects. Millions of things that we can agree on. But y'all and turn religion into a war. I mean, it's like, man, sometimes I wonder what would y'all do if you didn't have religion? Because you use all your religion to cover up for your hate. We got a lot of mean, hateful people in the church. Mean, you just as mean. <laughs> you just as mean. I ain't never seen nothing like it in my life. These people are mean and evil, and they do it in the name of Jesus. And I don't care how much somebody say, tell, talk about somebody else is not in the kingdom. I'm minding my business. You're the one over there calling me out my name, disrespecting me. That ain't of God. Who told you? Who would make you think that that's of God? You say I'm in the kingdom and you say I'm not in the kingdom, but you're the one disrespecting me, trying to provoke me. Just just come up, just saying what you want to say and, you know, with no order. And, 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 and you know, that's that's not the way of the kingdom. That don't represent Christ. That don't represent God at all. At one bit. And if you convince somebody that you of God doing that, then, then I feel sorry for them. It's the blind leading the blind. It's the blind. <laughs> He'd already told you a lie. Told you Trump would be the president. And he ain't. You still following that? Oh, bless your heart. We got a whole lot of mean people, man. Y'all so mean. I Listen. But it don't phase me. But I'm just telling you the truth. It don't phase me. I can take it. I got tough skin. I, I realized I had to have tough, tough skin when I was a kid. I was a minister of music in my church at 13 years old. I was responsible for 100 voice, a 100 voice choir for the young adults and adults. I had to teach them all notes when I was 13 years old. You know I had to learn get tough skin. 
So half the things people are saying, I don't pay you no attention. Y'all know this. I go on about my business, do what I'm doing, right? When, uh, the people just be dry. Da, da. Guess what? De what Dietrich get? He over there working on his new album. He working on his new movie. He over there working on some his clothing. He doing, you know, he he busy. He busy. <laughs> Which means you wasting your time. Stop doing that. Stop being so mean. And what y'all got to say? Let me see. Yes, some people in church are mean. Downright mean. They mean. I'm telling you, Ruth. Evil, just as evil in the name of the Lord. Won't support you, but let them do something. They want the whole world to stop and support it. Bless them, curse was the truth. Oh, thank you, Desiree. Ah, oh, you are real, and that's what I like about you. I try to be real. I'm from Detroit. And not just from Detroit. I was, you know, uh, the way I was raised is that you had to be that way. And tell me the truth. The truth will set you free. That's that was the that's how it flowed in my house. Just tell the truth. Get once you tell the truth, you get it's over with. You get your whooping and keep going. <laughs> you know, that's the, you tell the truth. Uh, uh, that, just tell the truth. You be done with it. And a lot of people, I realize that a lot of people cannot handle the truth. They talk about they had the truth to set you free, but the moment somebody tell you the truth, like sit you down and give you facts. Folks can't handle it. And those so called Christians. I see you, Ken. What's up, Ken? How was church today, man? It was wild today at Hill City today, man. Hill City was wild. <laughs> I preached a message. God is applying pressure. He's applying pressure. It was. Y'all got to see that message, hear that message. Applying pressure. Pressure. Uh, it's all right. People will realize one day that when you fight against children of God. Yeah. Yeah. I lost and found out. Uh, it should be on there. Quan, it should be on there. It's not on there. Take a look one more time because I brought that to uh, RCA's attention. I, you know, I was on RCA records for uh, 12 years. And that's for the guy who said Dietrich hadn't couldn't get a second, couldn't get a uh, do well in, 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 in the world. So he, he's singing gospel. <laughs> Let him know I was on RCA for 12 years. That's a secular record label. They got a gospel division. Uh, uh, and uh, was on there for 12 years. And uh, I brought that to their attention. I did the Lost and Found record when, in 2000. And I noticed that it wasn't on there before, but they worked it out. And, and I looked up and it was on there. So take a look again, because it should be on there. They corrected the matter. Uh, you can find it on Facebook here. Applying pressure. God is applying pressure. Good message. I, it was so hot in there today. We got to work out something going on with the air condition and the church is not strong enough. So pray for us. And we got all the people packed in there and it was hot. <laughs> I, saw, I said, let me preach fast because I'm hot too. <laughs> I said, let me go on to the mountaintop quick. Let me say what I got to say and get up out of here because it was hot. So y'all pray. Pray for us. The room is filling up. Church is packed and, and, uh, and we need some air. We need a, a new air condition or something. Uh, uh, I'm just reading the comments. If anybody want to say anything to me and want to ask me a question, I'll be glad to ask you to answer your question. I sing R&B and produce, and I wish a lot of church folk would listen to this. Yeah, they they gonna listen. They gonna. I can't tell you that they gonna pay attention and govern themselves accordingly. But they at least we can say we put it out there. I gave you facts today. There are many who are right in their own eyes. Yeah, there's many that are right in their own eyes. I mean, they they say all kinds of stuff. Uh, Bria said the word today was incredible. Awesome. Awesome. That's what they say. The message was good. I, I really felt like God gave me a word to speak. I may preach it again. I think it may be a series because I feel like I'm not finished because I had to because it was so hot. I had to get up out of there, get in and get out, make my points and get on up out of there and, and holler a while and get on up out of there. Michael Mendegall, Darius Twyman is one of my friends. Oh, yeah. Them, them my brothers, uh, Michael Mendegall and Dar Darius Scatman Twyman, my Detroit brothers. So a uh, gift to the body of Christ, the Christ. They're both so talented. Shout out to all my Detroit family. There's a lot of people that are in the church, but the church is not in them. Right. Absolutely. Some Tiff Keefe, she said, Pastor Dietrich. I'm listening, Tiff. Go ahead, Tiff. Say what you're going to say. I'm listening to you. Uh, comment really fast. I'm, I'm focused on Tiff. What are you asking me, Tiff? Uh, somebody said, what am I saying? Church was hot. Uh, our church and households were saved. Amen. 
Yeah, I know. Somebody said, our church was hot, too. Where did you get that hat? Oh, I ain't going to tell you my secret. That's a cold hat. <laughs> Andre, that's a cold hat, Doc. Hit me up in my uh, uh, Instagram page, my DM. I'll, I'll connect you to the guy who made the hat. I got several of these. This is a cold hat, Doc. The guy makes them on the, on the spot. You tell him what design you want. Oh, okay, you're from Detroit. I'll be in Detroit preaching at my dad's church this Thursday. If you're on here and you're in Detroit, get the word out. I'm coming for a one-day revival. Preaching, I'm bringing my praise team, everybody. We're flying to Detroit. I will be in the D this week, and I'll be preaching, and I got a prophetic word for High Praise Church and the city of Detroit. So if you're in the area, feel free to come. It's going to be packed out in there. We're going to have some Holy Ghost Church. All right, but get in there. Squeeze up in there. Squeeze up in there. I'm coming for the uh, POP, Pentecostal Outpour of Churches, uh, convocation. Uh, pastor David Haddon is the pastor there. My younger brother, he's the pastor. And I will be there uh, preaching the gospel. I'm coming to sing and preach. Uh, 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 I feel an attack from my city. And my soul. I, all right. Uh, okay. Uh, hey, what's up, Robert? What's up, Robert? Thanks. What's up, people? I, I'm on here for a minute to talk to y'all, but y'all ain't saying that. Anybody asking me no questions? Phoenix, is that on the is that on the schedule? I'm not sure that Phoenix is on the schedule. Uh, or Amanda said we confirmed some things for me. Thank you. Oh yes, I try. I do my best. I'm gonna keep it all the way 100 with you. I ain't, I ain't here to play no game, to pull no wool over nobody's eyes, and and try to convince you something that's not real. Everything I said could be backed up in the Word of God. Period. Period. There's nothing new under the sun. Uh, uh, once God comes in, it, you came to my cousin's church in Denver for a concert recently. It was incredible. Uh, church in Denver. Okay. What's up? What's up? I'd be going so many places I can't remember. I'm go it's going to be hot. It's going to be hot, Monica. Uh, that's awesome. I'll come out Thursday. Okay, Danielle, come on out. Yeah, we, we will be there. The address is 88, uh, Lord Jesus, 8809 Schoolcraft. <clears throat> it's the church I grew up in. The church where I uh, grew up and uh, uh, I learned a whole lot of stuff. The church where I met some church girls. <laughs> I, met the, I, I grew up there, so I, I've been in church all my life. <clears throat> so I know about church girls. Uh, Tiff, say you're one of my favorite. Oh, thank you so much. Are you coming to San Diego? <clears throat> we got to schedule something. I'm coming to Boston. I need to come. Set me up, Doc. I need to come. I'm going to Vegas to take my wife to see Usher. So when I come, I'm not, when I go to Vegas. Oh, I am going to preach in Vegas. Oh, Lord. I'll be preaching in Vegas on October the 14th at the Wealthy Place Church. Ooh, it's going to be hot up in there. That glory is up in there, Doc. It's going to be easy to preach up in there. October 14th, I'm taking the entire church. We're driving from LA to Vegas and I'll be there. But I'm going to take my wife also to see Usher in concert with his residency to check him out. Uh, when an artist samples, let me see what you're saying. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Y'all going too fast. So does the song that is being written by that art, artist have the lineup with the song that uh, wait a minute, you can see I'm saying, artists are sampling. Let me make sure I understand your question. When an artist samples a song, does the song that is being written by that artist have to line up with the song that the artist is sampling? Not necessarily. You talking technically or or like you know like. No, not necessarily. You just take the piece that, that works for you and, and, and what you're trying to do and you apply it to your song. It don't have to necessarily line up with, with the song that you, you know, you sampling from. No, it may be like a little like a bar or two, you know, or a melody line or whatever. Uh, they're really going to crucify you then, bro. Uh, they're really going to crucify you then, bro. Why are they going to crucify me, Blair? Why are they going to crucify me? Talk to me. Nisi Dixon, I see you. Let's yeah, you got to get this hat. It's crazy. 
Are you coming to Baltimore? Baltimore. Baltimore. Am I coming to Baltimore? Look like I was just there. I was in. I was. I was just in Delaware, man. It, it had to be about three thousand people packed in that church. It was crazy. Bought uh, Delaware. I was in Wilmington, Delaware. That concert was crazy. I pulled up them lines of lines of cars. I said, "Who they coming to see?" They said, "We coming to hear you, Dietrich." <laughs> they lined up. I mean, packed out. And I had a good time. And I just had my way. The Holy Ghost. Just had his way, and I was just in, in there singing up a storm, song after song. And I, I didn't want to stop. I guess everybody's excited to be outside now, right? So uh, I'll be in Chicago. Okay, so I'm go to, I'm, I'll be in Detroit this week on Thursday. Then I'll be in I'll be back in L.A. for we got the church picnic on Sunday. I can't wait for that. I'm excited about our church, Hill City Church picnic. If you're in the area, come hang out with us. On Sunday, next Sunday. Uh, then I go to Chicago on the 27th. I'm, on, I'm in Chicago, and I think it's Fred Hammond, uh, Ricky Dillard, uh, uh, Kiara Sheard. Uh, well, uh, yeah, everybody's going to be there. Everybody. And then they're going to have me throw me in there somewhere. So I'm going to sing my few songs and. And, and get on out the way with my two cents. But Chicago, y'all always show me love. When I go to Chicago, man, it's 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 always crazy. It's always crazy. Shot town. We like family, so <clears throat> I don't really have to sing in Chicago. They know all the songs. I just let the crowd sing in Chicago. That's why I saw you live in Delaware. Oh, you seen it? Okay. Not necessarily have to line up, but okay. Michael, uh, some famous church girls got pregnant urge age from Bishop It was a breast. I said, what? Mitchell, she is, is some famous church girls that got pregnant underage from a bishop. It was brushed under the rug. Okay, yeah, well, this, man, this is definitely, this is not Larry Reed live right here. We're not going, I'm not, I'm not here to talk about all that stuff. <laughs> my, go, go to my brother Larry. He, he'll, he'll unlock all of that stuff, you know. He'll unlock it. I'm, this ain't, this, that ain't what this is over here. So I don't, I don't know what to say about that. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm there. No. All right. So we are continuing to uh, uh, sow in the third quarter. Yes. Oh, man. Do, I can't begin to tell you the countless testimonies that have come in from our 21 days of prayer this last in the third quarter. Uh, one young, young lady, just the, the one that's on my mind is a young lady from Houston, Texas, uh, says she got two big miracles within uh, the third quarter already. Two big miracles. She's she making more money than she ever made. She said God just dumped it on her from the 21 days of prayer. All right. One person back. I'm going to always have it. DJ. Who is that? Who's that? Oh, oh uh, hey, Samaj. So what up, fam? One person back. I'm always having a Dietrich. He said he got my back. That's my Detroit family. And y'all need to get Samaj's album, man. His song is crazy. The song You is one of my favorite go tos when I'm riding along. Just, you know, I like to ride out and. You know, let the top down and, and roll out. And Samaj's is one of my, his song, You, is one of my go-tos. Uh, and just an incredible gift. And I prophesied to him one time, and, and God showed me that he was going to break wide, and he was next, and God was had next on him. I seen it. And uh, look at what God is doing for him. His album, I believe, is, is it out or is it coming out? Is it out now? Y'all look up Samaj. There he is. Say something to Samaj again so everybody can see you. And put the link to your, uh, uh, to your, uh, to how we can get your uh, song. The Saints are, uh, I had a, I had a, a, a thousand something people on here. Now the folks are, are tiring out. They're tired. They can't hang with us. But those of you that are hanging, I was born in Chicago. I'm 49. Okay, awesome. Well, they're going to be taking about, talking about us. Go out to usher back. Oh, they're gonna be talking. Oh, they're gonna be talking. You know, I don't care nothing about that. <laughs> Taking my wife to go see that shit, man. Please, you know, let them talk on while I'm at the uh, Usher concert. And Usher is my friend. I wrote a song, several, like three songs on his last album. Did y'all know that? I wrote three songs on Usher's last project. Yes, and that's to the young man who said Dietrich Haddon can't make it in the secular world, so he's singing gospel. This is foolish as I don't know what. This <laughs> just ain't got nothing to do with yourself. Yeah, you know, I am writing songs. I even wrote a song for Mary Jane. Wrote a song for a lot of people. Y'all don't know that's what I do. 
That ain't none of your business. Come on, that's my calling too. I got a gift to write. And, uh, and I'm, don't hate on me because I'm operating in every level of my call. You know? And it's amazing how God will put you in spaces and places uh, uh, to, be a, to be a light uh, to these artists, you know? And so I'm, I'm, while, while folks over there talking, I'm living. I, don't got, I only got one life to live. I ain't stealing what you're saying. I'm taking my wife to see Usher because that's her favorite artist. Outside of me is Usher. Now, Usher, let me tell y'all a true story. Y'all want to hear a true story before I go to bed? I'm in the studio, uh, working in the studio with Usher and Zaytoven, my brother. Shout out to Zaytoven. And you have to understand, Dominique, uh, Usher is like, like to me, is like Michael Jackson is somebody I'll scream over and go crazy over. Y'all done killed him off. Y'all done killed off Michael. Lord Jesus. But if I had met Michael face to face, I probably would have <laughs> fell out and fainted. Because <laughs> that's how much I, I loved him, man. I love Michael to this day. And uh, uh, so, so Usher is like Dominique's uh, Michael Jackson. Like, like she, she's the kid that had the poster on the, on the uh, wall and was kissing the poster until the, the lip area was all faded out. <laughs> that's her, listen, she know every Usher song, every riff, every run, every lyric songs that nobody knows she's an Usher fan. So, you know, when she found out I was working uh, in the studio with Usher, of course, she got excited. And I said, I'm going to take you. I'm going to take you to meet him one day. She said, no, I don't know if I want to meet him. Yeah, you're going to meet him. We're going to take you to meet Usher. We're going to go in there. You're going to man up. You're going to get strong. You're going to square your shoulders and go in there and meet Usher and get a picture. That's all. Just go and take a picture with Usher. Goodness gracious. It was like pulling teeth. So one day I'm in the studio. And, uh, and, and I said, uh, Dominique, come on in here, man. I'm going to introduce you to Usher. We're going to take a picture. She said, oh, God, oh, Lord, oh, I can't believe it. So she walked. I said, now, don't you embarrass me now. Don't you embarrass me. <laughs> we get in there. I said, Usher, uh, my wife is, you know, I told you. I already told you. I tried to prep you that my wife is one of your biggest fans. And she around the corner. She want to take a picture. Listen, y'all you got, got time? Oh, she said, yeah, yeah, come on. Tell her, come on here. Tell her, oh, man. Tell your wife to come here and take a picture. Do you know? Do you know Dominique embarrassed me? <laughs> she would not come around the corner. I'm saying, baby, come get the picture. She would not. I had to go get her. I said, what is wrong with you? She said, wait a minute. Let me gather my Let me get my. I'm going to meet. I'm going to meet. I said, yes. Now we got a studio session. Listen, she could not get herself together to go and meet her favorite artist. If it was me, I would have ran in there and said, let me get my picture, you know. Uh, and, but she, she went in there and she was shaking in the boots. <sighs> but she got her picture and I had to tell Usher, I said, Usher, listen, I'm, I'm so sorry. My wife, that you you like uh, like Michael Jackson is to me. You like that to her like she one of those fans all right he said i understand d don't don't sweat it <laughs> i said man i'm sorry i'm sorry man she she it was the most embarrassing thing one of the most embarrassing things no it wasn't it wasn't she uh i was happy to be able to do that for her you know because she she always talked about usher when i since the day i met her singing she said that's the only artist that's better than me because <laughs> that's her favorite artist is Usher and I don't mind I don't mind it don't bother me when you know when I met Dominique she didn't know half my songs she didn't know none of my music her mother did <laughs> her mother had my she didn't know nothing she, I said you don't know you don't know you don't know who I am no like no <laughs> oh lord Jesus but I'm so happy I was able to do that for her. I was so happy. Then, now, then she met him several times after that. She didn't act up the next time we were in the studio. I had to do a song. Me and Usher were working on something for Swiss with Swiss Beats and me and Swiss Beat, and and Usher went in the studio and and, uh, and she was in there and she 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 governed herself. She was cool. She was calm, 
And the usher was like, what's the matter now? You, you cool? <laughs> she, and she had got, I had to get it together. I said, no, if I take you in here to this session, don't you ever embarrass me like that. You got to get in. You're going to meet all kind of people. You, what, what, what happened? You didn't do that when you met this person. You, met the one. you can't do that. She said, well, listen. <laughs> hey, Blair, you know it was good for me. It was a blessing to me that I was able to introduce her to her favorite artist. It was a major blessing to me. Amen. She turned into a church girl uh, at, at night. Thank you, Jesus. And, and, and blessed her husband. <laughs> because because I, I got kudos as I introduced her to her favorite artist. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. I better get off here because it's getting late and I'm tired. And when I get tired, don't tell them what I say. You know, I've learned how to govern myself accordingly when I get tired. There's two times when you want to talk to me. <laughs> Early in the morning when I'm tired and late at night when I'm tired. You get the, you get the unadulterated truth. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you stuff that you ain't even ready for. <laughs> How do you deal with people who knowingly serve other gods? Love them. That's it. Love people. God has a way of reaching them. That's it. All we have to do is love people, man. And don't turn them away. Don't turn people away. You know, don't, don't judge them because they're worshiping some other God. God knows how to get them. You don't have to play God. I, went, I mean, that was what the whole session was about today, right? You know, go back and watch everything I said and go through it. Be thorough. Just take your time. You can even stop and pause it and, 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 and digest everything that I said. I want you to really take everything I said today and, and, and I pray that it was sown on good ground. Our job here is to love people and let God do what he's going to do with people. I'm waiting on you and us together. Uh, hey, you never know. Love you, Pastor. Uh, ah, I'll see you next. I'll see you next week, Ken. Ken is coming from Seattle to Hill City for the picnic. Y'all cooking some ribs, Ken? What y'all got? Y'all going to have something on the grill? What y'all? What's up, Robert? Love is the key, man. No, I ain't doing no singing now. I'm, I'm tired. I'm, the, the singing, I'm all preached out, talked out, and sang out. I, I won't talk all day tomorrow. I'm, I done done enough in one day. The preachers do a whole lot of talking. We do enough talking in, in one hour that can last for the whole week. I'm done. And then I did this session here. I am done talking. Deborah said, you made it plain. Thank you, Deborah. And thank you, Deborah. You always sowing into the ministry. You sow into Hill City Church. Deborah's about that life. She ain't just talking. She about it. She's the reason why our church is afloat. You sow your seed. I see your seed, Deborah Ross. When it comes in, I say, Deborah's sowing again. So we keep these lights on and keep, keep our church going. God bless you, uh, Deborah. May God bless you 1,000 fold because you don't have to do it. No, no verse tonight. I'm done. No singing tonight. Are you going to do any more movies? Yes, I got movies lined up. I'm in the movie business now. Let everybody know Dietrich Haddon is a movie star now. <laughs> I'm making movies. The roles are coming in. I'm rolling, man. I'm shooting my next film in uh, October in Atlanta. I'll be there for a month. Uh, and it's my film, my movie, my story. Uh, I'm directing it. Uh, I direct it. I'm starring in it. It's my film. Go watch The Fallen so you can see where we're headed. So, yes, we're making more movies. And, and, the, and the door is open to you, too. Once we do the casting call for Atlanta, you hear about it, come on and bring your A-game. The door is wide open for everybody in the kingdom. Whosoever will, let them come. God is able to get us. Amen. All right. Y'all ready? We're going to sign out. Uh, all right, Desiree. We're going to sign out. When are you coming to bless us with some of the great word in, in, in uh Arizona. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Actually, I got a meeting. I got things happening, y'all. We, we rolling. We coming. We coming. Crystal said, we at church today. We sure did. Hill City was crazy today. Uh, you coming? Okay, Bria, you coming to the next audition? It's going to be in uh, Atlanta. And I should be announcing it soon. I want to say give a shout out to uh, my new artist that's coming on the scene, that's Mike and Diane, they're the praise and worship leaders at Hill City Church. But we got them a new hit single that's going to hit the radio and their new video that we just produced. It will be, uh, we'll have a world premiere on BET uh, this uh, Friday coming. 
this Friday coming. So we're excited at Hill City Church. They've been, uh, Mike and Diane have been serving faithfully at Hill City. And uh, when you serve uh, and you sacrifice, uh, there's a reward that comes for that. And uh, I made it my business to make sure I produced a hit song for them and uh, get them on the right track. And I made it my business to make sure that I uh, produced a, a good music video for them. And BET loved it. Uh, and they're going to be world premiering it uh, this Friday. So I'm excited about uh, the new artist, our own, very own uh, uh, Hill City Church finest uh, artist, Mike and Diane. They're a couple. And uh, I'm excited for them. They've worked hard. Uh, they pretty much, Mike has pretty much grown up in my church. He's been there since the beginning, Mike Spann. Uh, and so he's, I consider him to be a son. Uh, and so I'm excited for to see how his journey has come from, I met uh, Mike and he locked in with me. Been there carrying my bags. He's been there serving, picking up, I had him picking up speakers and breaking down, uh, setting up and breaking down to different places. I, I tell Mike to do something, he right on top. He on, just getting it done, you know, on top of it. He's one of my main armor bearers. And uh, I'm excited to see where God has taken them, you know, and it's my responsibility to uh, make sure that those that are called to me are on the right track and they get their opportunities. And And I don't want folks thinking that, yeah, I go to Hill City Church, I get me a record deal. That's not how I work. Mike been serving at my church for six years. <laughs> six years. <laughs> I'll make sure folk ain't in it to just try to get something from me. You got to come on here and serve. I want to get a record deal. Okay, those we scrubbing, well, right now we picking up these, uh, we knocking this wall down, then we uh, and, and and then we pick we cleaning up the bathrooms and, and we serving. That's what we are doing. And the blessing gonna come at the right time. That's how that's how it is. And so, uh, but when the right time hits and 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 God give me the clearance, um, listen, the doors why anything that I have is for uh, the faithful members of my church. Uh, many of our members of our church are in the film. The film that you're going to watch, The Fallen, uh, many of the members of my church are uh, playing roles in the film. So uh, they got that experience. They helped me to actually produce it. A lot of them were PAs and extras, and some had strong roles, some had little, you know, small roles, but they were in there. And uh, when the door opens for me, it opens for everybody that's connected to me. That's the way I am. I told you I'll give you the shirt off my back, but uh, I need to know that you're with me first before I. Just, I'm not giving you the keys of the kingdom without you being proven. Because I give you the key to the kingdom and then you go on and just squander and do whatever and, and just treat it any kind of way. And it's not going to happen. Not on my watch. If you get the keys in the kingdom to the kingdom of what, what I have, you worked. You served and you deserve it. That's how it goes. Because I'm going to tell you something. Ain't nobody handed, nobody handed me nothing. You hear me? Ain't nobody handed me nothing. I come from D Detroit, surrounded by great gospel artists. Ain't nobody handed me nothing. They hand, they hand me a thing. They say, "Did you going to work for it?" You say, "You a star? You got to work." <laughs> I thought somebody's going, you know, they hear me sing and they put me on. Da, da, da. I could really sing high, like Michael Jackson back then. Now I'm getting older, so it's kind of, you know, but I can say, and it's okay, that's good. All right. God bless you. Keep on keeping on. I'll be like, what? <laughs> What's going on? They're not going to get me to know. Come over here. Come to the studio. Just hang out. I'll never forget when uh, uh, I finally had an opportunity to work in the studio. It was a uh, shout out to Bishop Brooks. Uh, uh, Bishop Mike Brooks, uh, he had the Young Artist for Christ, and he asked me to sing a, a lead with Park Stewart in the studio. It was my first time in the studio singing uh, a professional song in the studio that he produced. And I was in there shaking in my boots, you hear me? Knees knocking, just, just, <laughs> just shaking. <laughs> I said, Lord, please help me to sing. Please help me, uh, open up my mind. <laughs> And Park Stewart was in there just killing it. And then I got in there and started singing, and it worked out. I sang a song, Choice to Rejoice. You can hear it on the Young Art. Look up Young Artist for Christ, Dietrich Haddon, 
choice to rejoice. Then I went to uh, Ron Winans Family and Friends Choir. Y'all ever heard that back, back in the day, the Ron Winans Family and Friends Choir? If you look on that first album, if you look close on the album cover, you'll see my little head right there in the tenor section. <laughs> yeah, yes. Listen, I work for what I got. I work for what I got. Little by little, keeping my face out there, keeping my name out there, doing my thing, singing with my group. Then when it was time, I recorded my, my own church album, and it took off from there. Then they started saying, that, that's that kid that was in the choir. Yes, it's me. That's the kid that sang choice. Yeah, that's me. Yes. I don't just have one. I, get, I just ran off 10 hits for you. <laughs> uh, well, he ain't he going to fade off. No, okay, I'm, it's another decade. I'm going to run off another 10, 20 hits. You going to respect me. <laughs> I'm here. I'm representing Detroit, too. And uh, that's how I can't got in the game, you know. And uh, but nobody, they didn't hand me a thing. I'm gonna tell you another thing that's deep. I went to the same high school, different years, but I went to the same high school as all the Clark sisters, Twinkie, all of them, Dorinda, uh, Karen. They all went to Mumford. Fred, all of Commission, they all went to Mumford High School. Yes, all of Commission, Witness, uh, Lisa Page Brooks. And witness, they all went to Mumford High School. BB and CC, all of the Winans brothers went to Mumford High School, and we pretty much had the same music teacher. Yes. And had several times had the opportunity to sing with the Winans at the school. Yes. But they weren't they ain't handed you nothing. <laughs> they ain't handed you nothing, Doc. Uh-uh. No, you gotta get out here and work like they did. And that's what I loved about Detroit. Like, you know, we had this, everybody had this, like this, 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 they got this drive, this go get. Like, that's one thing you get from Detroit. You won't take no for an answer. It's one thing I'm glad I was born and raised in Detroit because it taught me like nobody's, you know, you're not entitled to anything. You got to get out here and be the best. Uh, Nikita, Nikita, you went to Mumford, you graduated in 93. Oh, Okay. The month for Mustangs in the house. I graduated in 91. 1991. Yes. Mumford High School. Mumford Mustangs. Yes, I was on the Young Artists for Christ. Yes. Miss Jackson. You already know. Nikisha, you already know Miss Jackson. Well, she's Miss Thompson now. She got married. Yep. I'm going to tell you a real story. Uh, Nikisha, you probably was there. No, you graduated in 93. I graduated. No, you wasn't there. You wasn't there. You probably was coming in on in the ninth grade when I was going out. But let me tell you what happened. Back then, the Winans and Oprah, Winf Oprah Winfrey did a like school tour called uh, what do they call that? Uh, the I Care rallies. They was doing the I Care rallies back then to all the high schools in Detroit. So they would go and just visit, walk through, sign autographs, and the kids be screaming. they call us all to the assembly, to the auditorium, and so we can hear Oprah Winfrey encourage us and hear the wine and sing. And so everybody was so hyped that day, and I had a group in Mumford called Mumford Edition. We were like, uh, uh, went to Mumford in 69, what? That's what's up. Well, we had a group back in the day called Mumford Edition. It was me, Eric Bishop Taylor. It was uh, Barry Ginyard. Uh, where's Milton? I, said, I, got, I need to check on Milton. Milton. I mean, it was all of us, a whole group. And uh, uh, lots of money singing. He's able on the road. Come on now. Come on now. You better tie it. You better tie the Hill City. Come on now, Blair. You better sing. He's able. So one day, my teacher, Miss Thompson, well, Miss Jackson, you just gave her a shout out. She said, y'all going to sing with the Winans. And we just was all, man, what? We going to sing with the Winans? So we practiced and practiced and practiced. And here come Pastor Marvin Winans walking in the door with his gaiters on and his full length fur coat. We'll never forget it. It was like God just stepped in the room, in the music room. <laughs> God, <laughs> Marvin Wilder, tell me the boy can say he's still cold blooded. Nobody can touch him now to this day. But he was just so in, like, it wasn't an arrogance. It was just a confidence, man, that exuded from his, 
his, just his, his being, like, it just made you say, man, this man is great. Like, he is in the fullness of his glory. <laughs> like, and we were there for it. You know what I'm saying? We loved every bit of him. We all tried to get us some gators after that. We went broke trying to get a pair of gators and trying to wear fur coats. <laughs> we got the fake, the foam, the fake fur coats trying to be like Marvin. We had the Dob hats back then. It wasn't these wide brims. It's just, a, you know, fedoras, the Dobbs. We call them Dobbs. And uh, trying to be like Marvin. Marvin stepped in that music room and sat at the piano and said, all right, what's your name? I said, I'm Dietrich. All right, Dietrich, sing this part for me. What's your name, Milton? No, sing that. He taught us and got us ready for that rally. And we went and sang in front of the whole school, Mumford High School. And I think it got to the part, I think I did the part. There'll probably be a thousand things I want to tell the Lord. Oh, that day, that day. I think I did that part. But when I sang my part, the school went crazy. I mean, they went screaming, screaming. Marvin said, he stopped playing and said, who is this kid? <laughs> <laughs> they said, that, that's Dietra, 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 Dietra. The whole school went crazy. I was like, yeah. I looked over at him. Yeah, you go, you going to know me. <laughs> you go. <laughs> I said, you going to know me, Doc. They was like, this, who was this singing? Because they did millions. We did millions, didn't make it. But I was one of the ones who did. Y'all know that old song? Don't y'all know that one? Oh, okay, all right. Y'all act like I don't know what I'm talking about. Was you there? Nikisha said she was there. Listen, that was the moment when I realized, like, this is what you are you called to do. You can do this. You can handle it. I wasn't scared. You know, you can't. It's hard to sing in front of your peers, right? Because they're gonna laugh if you if you bomb out. You're gonna hear it for the rest of the school year. You are gonna hear it. For the rest of the school, they're going to run you down. You're going to be the joke of the whole school. You hear me? But I went up there and told that song up. I made it my own. And they, they and pastor said, who is he? And the crowd said, deep check, deep check. I was a star for the rest of the year. They said, get Dietrich to sing. I go and sing my song. I became a little star in the school. But that was a big moment for me. I'll never forget it. Like like And so... But after you would think that the whiners maybe, you know, call me and say, let me get the Dietrich Hatton to, to, to. <laughs> no, you say, we remember him. <laughs> we, he got to work hard just like we did. We come from nothing and we made it to where we are. And so he got to do it too. And so uh, I thank God for that. So now, like. That mentality, I, I still have it. Like, I don't need, you know, I just work hard. I just work hard, you know. I stand alone. I don't need to have a bunch of friends, a bunch of people. Uh, I, I don't need all that. I go out and get it done. <laughs> I, get it done. I don't even go on stage with a bunch of singers. Y'all, who's seen me in concert recently? I don't just, I'm just, I'm just, just give me the mic. Give me the mic. Give me my band. Let's hit it. Let's go. The Detroit mentality, it, 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 it taught me, like, you can't depend on people and you can't, you, you know, nobody owes you anything. Like, you just get up and you go. If you call to it, then heaven going to back you up. But don't nobody owe you nothing. You got to work to get this crowd on your side. I do it every time. Every time. And I love every bit of it. And uh, I'm tired of talking. Zambia. Good to see you, Zambia, Africa. It looks like I'm going to uh, Nigeria for the first week in November. Looks like I'll be in London one day, and then maybe the next three concerts will be in uh, Nigeria. So I'll let y'all know as that uh, all that come together. All right, I love y'all. I got to go. I'm tired. Peace.